Today, we look at what might just be the most impressive portable computer of the early 1990s, or at least one version of it. Hi, I'm Jacob with Tech Retrospective, and today we are continuing our looks at classic portable computers. And we have one of the coolest in our entire collection to look at today, the HP 95LX. You are probably pretty familiar with HP already, whether you've used one of their many, many desktop or laptop computers, used one of their many cloud computing offerings, or ripped your hair out thanks to their terrible, terrible printers. They have a long history of innovative technology, but one area they particularly excelled in was the world of early small form factor portable computers. HP's first portable computer was the HP 110, released in 1984. This nine pound beast was a huge step up from most of your luggable style computers of the time. No contest, if you were looking for the best portable computer on the market in 1984, you were getting an HP 110. As long as you could afford its $3,000 asking price. One of the most praised features of the 110 was its inclusion of Lotus 123 in ROM. Lotus 123 was the standard for spreadsheet software on IBM compatibles from its release in 1983 through to the mid-90s, when it lost an unwinnable battle to Microsoft Excel. I cannot overstate just how popular Lotus 123 was for years, which gave its employees access and influence over the computer industry. One of these employees was the general manager of R&D, Leon Davikis, who became obsessed with the idea of Lotus 123 users being able to freely use their software anywhere using a small handheld data entry device. He was so passionate about the idea that he carved a block of wood to the size of the device he imagined and took it out on the road to pitch it to any computer hardware company who would listen. One of his stops along his journey was to HP's offices where he pitched the idea and discovered that HP had already been in the early design stages of a device that nearly aligned with his idea. The two companies would then band together to improve this design and create the system Leon wanted, with Lotus 123 built in in just 15 months of work. That system would be called the HP 95LX which would release in 1991 at a price of $699. The initial model shipped with 512K of RAM, but by the next year that would be upgraded to one megabyte with an added bonus of a cost reduction down to $550. For the money, this system was an incredible bargain. Its high RAM amount paired with its 5.37 MHz NEC V20 CPU made it considerably more powerful than an XT-class desktop computer, which sold for thousands of dollars just eight years previously. And now you had all that performance in the palm of your hand. Those specs are even more impressive when you consider the sheer amount of miniaturization. This machine is tiny weighing just 10 ounces. Its clamshell design made it truly pocket-sized. Scale is hard to describe through video, but if you've ever held a Nintendo DS in your hand, just imagine that, since it's nearly exactly the same size. Now, before I hype it up too much, you should know that despite its specs, it's not actually PC compatible due to its display only being a quarter of the resolution of the CGA standard. Also, the 95LX isn't the first palm-sized computer. That would probably be the Pocket computer, released a year earlier in 1990. However, the 95LX was a huge step up in portability, being significantly smaller and lighter than the Pocket. The other key difference is in price. The Pocket launched with a starting price of $1,995. The HP system launched at a third of that, 
making it a lot more obtainable for a wider audience. The Pocket was super impressive though, with its full resolution screen and unique expansion options. I would love to cover it someday, but we don't own one and they've become quite expensive collector's items. We picked up our 95LX system on eBay for an absolute steal at just $37. It's the higher end one megabyte model, and as you can see, it works just fine. Opening the clamshell, you can see the 5.4 inch widescreen display, the gold embossed HP logo, and one megabyte spec, with the Lotus 123 label apparently not being good enough for the gold treatment. And you'll also see the 79 key keyboard that is fairly good despite its tiny size, even including a full number pad. On the right side is the CM2032 backup battery, an IR transmitter, which was primarily used to wirelessly print to compatible printers, an RS-232 serial port, and the power in. On the right side is a PCMCIA expansion port for adding an SRAM card for expanded long-term storage. And on the bottom is the battery compartment, which takes two AA batteries, which can last for up to a month of standby use. Despite being the smallest retro computer in our collection, this thing never ceases to impress me. I think back to the Laser Compumate 1 from a few videos ago, and look at just how useless that thing was compared to this system that came out just three years later. The HP really was a huge step up in terms of actually useful and compatible portables. It's no surprise that this system was popular enough, particularly with executives and journalists, for HP to continue to support it for an absurdly long time. Support ended in 2003. That's an insane 12 year lifespan. That's not to say that HP rested on their laurels after this great design. HP would release several direct successors to it with the HP 200 LX family of palm tops, which kept the same physical design, but it had even more impressive specs with a 186 compatible CPU and full CGA graphics. Maybe we'll look at one of those in a future video. But for now, the ratings. Usability, five out of five. This system is surprisingly easy to use. Not even talking about its portability, I'm talking its intuitiveness. I'm used to the process of working on older portables being a complex affair filled with confusing button layouts, symbols that you have to press eight other keys to access, and an overall workflow that would take months to really get the hang of. Not here. When I first powered this thing up, I had no problems accessing all of its functions, no manual required. Rarity, three out of five. You can find a few for sale on eBay at any given time, but they certainly are not common. Price, two out of five. These systems aren't too expensive, but the price for any accessories you manage to find will be quite high. Aesthetics, five out of five. This thing is classy. If you pulled this thing out in an extremely professional boardroom meeting, nobody would bat an eye. I really enjoy the overall design of the system and the gold accenting makes it feel just premium. Software, three out of five. The built-in software is pretty great, though I do wish the word processor was a bit more feature rich. It would also be fairly easy to load up your own software on this system with a bit of dedication. So there we have it, that was the HP Pocket Computer. I think if you look at the modern market of palm top size computers, there's a lot going on right now. And it's neat to look back at where that all started. I think this is one of the most interesting little systems in our collection, and I'm happy that we got to cover it. And if you'd like to see us cover more classic computers, make sure to like this video and subscribe. Let me know down in the comments below if you've ever used one of these devices and join our Facebook group so that you can stay connected with new videos coming out. And if you'd like to support this show financially, check out our Patreon.
and I will see you guys next time.